of, of ceremony for today. It's such an honor to welcome you here in this event. Uh, so let's just start the webinar series uh, for the Honorable, Mention, Honorable Associate Professor Kauru Suehiro uh, and Dr. Ferdi Mohtar as today's speaker. The Honorable Dr. Lili Tambunan, today's moderator. The Honorable Dr. Robi Dwiko Giuliardi, the chairman of uh, the committee. The Honorable Associate Professor Aswin Indra Brasta, Vice Dean from School of Architecture, Planning and Policy Development, ITB, and all beloved participants. Let me begin by giving you a warm welcome to the first webinar series brought to Habit Techno 5. Before we come to the main session, uh, here is a brief description about Habit Techno 5. Uh, it is a Biennale International Conference focusing on innovative solutions in concept and practice of contemporary technology for housing and settlement development. Habit Techno 5 International Conference uh, will be held on November 11, 2021 online from Bandung with the main theme Adaptive Technology for Resilient Human Settlement. As a pre-event, we are conducting a webinar series towards the main conference. Today's webinar topic is Resilience by Design. To make our time conducive, here is the rule of today's webinar. Okay, so Participants must join using the registered name that they have registered earlier. Second, participants are expected to be disciplined during the webinar session. Third, participants must understand and comply with the procedure of question and answer. Uh, participants can ask questions only through Q&A features on the Zoom platform or the live chat feature on the YouTube streaming. In order to uh, avoid repeated questions, participants should read the existing question before asking. If your question has been asked by other participants, you can click upvote the thumb uh, icon to that question. The question to be answered first are those with the highest number of votes or based on the order of time. Participants can only ask a substantive question related to the webinar theme. Lastly, the organizing committee has the right to exclude participants who do not follow the rules. Okay, for the first agenda today, uh, we invite Dr. Robi Dwiko Giuliardi, the chairman of the committee, to give an opening speech for today. Dr. Robi, time is yours. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Fatina. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon for Indonesian participants and good day for participants who are attending from other countries and also on behalf of uh, universities, consultants, governments, who registered in uh, this event. Uh, as you know, we know we almost have 250 attendees. Selamat sore dan selamat petang. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Robi Dwiko Juliardi. As a chairman of this seminar, on behalf of the committee, to all participants and both speakers, Honorable Professor Kauru, Sue Hiro and Dr. Ferdi. I appreciate for your participant to attend in this first webinar series of fifth Happy Techno Seminar in 2021. This must be the best occasion for all of us to be able organizing this event, even though by online due to pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, and all participants, also speakers, 
Today is the fifth Habitechno and become the fifth two years have been held until now. Alhamdulillah, Adaptive Technology for Resilient Human Settlement as theme chosen at this moment. This topic based on sustainable competitiveness, networking, and community to achieve. This topic has two main thematic areas as an adaptive technology and a resilient human settlement. Both are addressed to the basis of choice for participants to submit abstract on June 1st as presented at the beginning. But we have three webinar series for you to attend as an introduction that may completely understood towards main seminar that presented by many invited speakers. So hopefully, based on the, this uh, webinar series may convey you to provide a completely understanding on the fifth Habitat Now seminar on November 11th and include full paper submission on December at the end of this year. So enjoy this webinar series and until we meet again in Habitat Now fifth seminar. Anyway, last but not least, I have to say to four participants who are having fasting currently to have iftar happily when the time is on, not only in West Java, but also in other parts of Indonesia and other countries. Keep healthy and stay safe. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Robi, for your warm, warm welcome. Uh, next, we invite Associate Professor Aswin Indra Prasta on behalf of the Dean from School of Architecture, Planning and Policy Development, ITB, to officially open the webinar series. Time is yours, Mr. Aswin. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Fatina. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore, salam sejahtera, dan salam sehat untuk kita semua. Happy Labor's Day on the 1st of May. And for those who are fasting, may God Almighty grant you patience and also perseverance. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and all participants. Thank you for being here with us virtually in this afternoon. In the first webinar series of Road to Habit Techno International Conference by the Architecture Program, School of Architecture, Planning and Policy Development, Institute Technology Bandung. It is my pleasure to welcome you all in this first webinar series. This first webinar series will hold the topic of resilience by design, an issue that grows utmost concern and uh, attention among planners, architects, designers in the field of built environment. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Aswinindra Prasta, Vice Dean of Academic Affairs, SAPPD ITB. On behalf of the School of Architecture, Planning and Policy Development, I would like to express my sincere appreciation and also grateful to our invited speakers today, Professor Kaoru Suehiro from Kyushu University, Japan, Yurosiku Onegaishimas Sensei, and the second, Dr. Ferdi Muhtar from Dinas Ketahanan Pangan, Makassar City, Sulawesi Selatan. As mentioned before, Habitechno International Conference is a Biennial Conference that started in 2013, organized by Building Technology Research Group and also the Housing and Human Settlement Research Group of SAPPD ITB, that address on the issues, research, and innovation related to the human settlement and appropriate technologies for better living. This year, the conference that will be held on November picks the theme Adaptive Technology for Resilient Human Settlement that hopefully could gather academicians, researchers, as well as practitioners to discuss and disseminate studies, findings, uh, findings and innovation in leveraging resiliency in our built environment. On the course to the conference, we will have four webinar series, each with a very important and different topics, but relevant to the main theme. During the next few months, uh, participants will be learning about resiliency, about construction industry, 
about sustainable strategies and adaptive material and also technologies from prominent national and international speakers. Well, I do not want to take too much of your time and we will start listening to our speakers. So uh, very welcome, very warm welcome to all participants. I'm sure this webinar will be a meaningful and sparks a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much and enjoy learning something new in this webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Aswin, for your speech. And that remarks the official opening of webinar series Road to Habit Techno 5. Um, a quick announcement for ITB student. Uh, please fill the list of attendees through the link uh, that I will write on the Zoom chat box. Okay, so we finally arrive to the main session. This session will be guided by Dr. Lili Tambunan. Uh, but before that, let me quickly introduce her first. Okay, uh, Dr. Lili Tambunan was graduated from Universitas Hasanuddin and gained her master and doctoral degree from Institute Technology Bandung. Throughout the years, she has developed her expertise on building technology and safety, especially fire mitigation. These are some research and projects related to that theme. We have 20 minutes presentation for each speaker, followed by 20 minute question and answer. So without further ado, Dr. Lili Tambunan, I'll hand this over to you. Thank you, Ms. Fatina. Good afternoon or good evening, all participants. Thank you for joining us. Nice to see you all. As already mentioned, today's seminar is the first series of the Road to Habitat No. 5 webinar series. The main topic today is uh, resilience by design. The speakers today are Dr. Kauru Soe Hiro and Dr. Perdi Mohtar. Alhamdulillah, thank God, both of them are already here. Good afternoon, Dr. Kauru and Dr. Perdi. Yes, good afternoon. Thank, thank, you, thank you for attending. How are you? Uh, I hope everything. Hi, thank you. Okay, I hope everything is uh, go, going well in your place and everything is in good health. Well, I uh, will guide this seminar for the next one hour and so. The seminar will begin with a presentation by invited speakers for 20 minutes each, and after which it will be followed by Q&A session for 20 minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first speaker is Dr. Ferdi Mohtar, SPT, MST, PhD. He will deliver the presentation entitled Tourism in the Post-Pandemic Recovery Program. Before the presentation, let me first read the, Dr. Ferdi's curriculum today. Dr. Ferdi was born in Andrekang, South Sulawesi in 1973. Currently, he is working as civil servant at the city of Makassar at Food Security Service or Dinas Ketahanan Pangan. Dr. Ferdi took his bachelor degree from bachelor degree from Agribusiness Social Economic Hasanuddin University in 1998 and Master of Science from Graduate School of Life and Environmental Science Sukuba University Japan in nine in 2009 and Doctor of Philosophy from Curtin University Faculty of Science and Engineering, Western Australia in 2016. He has worked in several government agencies, including the Regional Planning and Development Agency and the Office of Marine Affairs, Fisheries, Fisheries Agriculture and Branch. Dr. Ferdi also has experience in being a coordinator in program between the government of Enrekang and the Kingdom of the Netherlands uh, in the field of sustainable economic development in 2002 until 2005. Some of his published work, works, among others, um, consumer preference and potential demand for organic products in Indonesia and uh, 
um, in the preparation of publication is um, published yet yeah, enabling enabling environment for agribusiness supply chain at the local, provincial, and regional levels in South Sulawesi provinces, Indonesia. Okay, Dr. Ferdi, please present your material. The time is yours in 20 minutes. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Ibu Dr. Lili. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, everybody, and Makassar, almost good evening. Uh, my name is Ferry. I am working as a government officer. Just yes, Ibu Lili uh, tell about me. Actually, my uh, daily job about how to enhance their community in terms of food security, especially for uh, the community in Makassar who live in Eli. Uh, well, the first presentation, this is Makassar geography. Makassar city is uh, one of the uh, central business in eastern part of Indonesia. Uh, service and industrial sector uh, has dominated economic growth in eastern part in Makassar. In 2019, the economic growth of the city with the highest period above, above the national level, around 8.79%. Uh, However, uh, during the pandemic COVID, it decreased dramatically. It decreased dramatically around minus 1.27. And to be expected in 2020, around 5.50. With the number of population around 1.5 million, majority of them live in Eli. In Makassar, uh, there are about uh, 7,500 Eli. Eli is uh, one of a residential area that has a small root access. Paperi, uh, sorry, Mister. Can you play the slideshow? Pardon? Please, the slideshow of the. PowerPoint, your PowerPoint slide. Oh, you, you can see my, my PowerPoint slide. You can see my PowerPoint yeah, slide. We can see, but can you play the slideshow? So only one slide show in the screen. Oh, I see. Screen. Okay. This one, the already? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Oh, I see. Yes. Maybe. Just a minute. Okay. Okay, good. about this already appear? The previous slide is okay, but now... I cannot see. You, we can uh, we see two, two slides now. Oh, this one? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Ferdi, I think uh, the, this one is the presenter view. Maybe you can swap the display first.
Okay, good. So, so I can start right now. Yes, uh, I think I already explained that one. You can see. Yes, Makassar, uh, just a moment. How about this one? Okay. Uh, Makassar is a city, is one of the city with the largest economic growth in eastern part of Indonesia. And with a population around 1.5 million people. Uh, the service and industrial sector dominate economic growth in Makassar. In 2019, the economic growth around 8.79%. However, during the pandemic COVID-19, uh, the growth of economic, it decreased dramatically around minus 1.27. And to be expected in 2020, the growth of economic around 5.59 percent, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, the residential area in Makassar. This is a specific area in Makassar because majority of people live in Ely. Uh, right now, there are about uh, around 7,500 Ely. LA is kind of residential area that has small road access. The road, the road wide around two to three meters, which can only be accessed by vehicles. For motorcycle, I think it's a more convenience. With the density high population, it gives positive effect, such as a, a good interaction with each other and increasing number of uh, small medium enterprise conduct economic activities. However, it brings uh, several negative effects, such usually appear with it put in security, uh, social problems, and security disturbance. If you can see the pictures before the government focus on uh, maintaining the garden LA, this is unproductive LA majority of them just only spend much more time without a good job and poor, and poor environmental conditions. And since 2017, the government enhanced the community in LA by asking them to, particip to participate with the government program and how to collaborate with them and most of each department under the Makassar city involved on working together to increase uh, social economic condition in LA. So I try to develop such kind of framework to increase the competitive competitors of a community in LA based on my experience conducting this program around uh, three years. The first about uh, essential purpose about the essential instruments which focus on encouraging the society involved in the government program namely participate and second about uh, infrastructure uh, the important instruments which focus on how the government com making competitive productions to the community uh, namely, uh, giving technical guidance and also making a good standardization for all the products that produced by community in LA. And third is a usable, usable uh, instrument which focus on making possible opportunity for the functional market and enterprise. So I will explain in detail about the uh, the first uh, instrument, namely for participate, to relate the active to, to relate the active community to participate in the government program. Each government at uh, sub district level uh, communicate directly to the uh, community, asking about the problem, uh, asking what kind of 
uh, they need to uh, involve the government program and how to solve the problem. For instance, member of, for instance, uh, we establish a member of farmer group in the in the party in the LA, and the member will be responsible how to utilize uh, the government program based on uh, that delivery by uh, each department under the uh, Makassar governments. And the second about the infrastructures. I think infrastructure is uh, in LA just only the basic infrastructure. For example, the, how the strike light and uh, water circulation and the access, the good quality of root access area. Uh, the picture about this where the government try to enhance the community by asking the uh, public sector uh, service working directly and how to maintain the root access, how to make a good environment for the community can live in, in LA. And the second about the uh, technical guidance, in relation to uh, Garden LA, we have 60 extension 60, uh, 60, worker uh, work directly to the farmer, and giving uh, such kind of training how the community can uh, cultivate the agriculture production, how uh, they giving advice to the uh, community, special for women farmer group to inject farming properly. And nowadays it become urban farming system that more uh, advanced. About the standardization of product, I think this is uh, really important because uh, it used to be most of the product just only conducting with the informal sector uh, for an unhealthy consumes. But, uh, nowadays, the government realized how to enhance the economic standard of the LA. The most important thing, how to make in good production. And now, uh, certification of product uh, leveling standard and using packaging are good established in LA. So most of the small uh, medium enterprise can sell directly to the product, not only for informal market, but also for the formal sector market. For example, the restaurant, uh, hotel, and they can also uh, sell by uh, uh, digital market and about the marketing uh, the, the community usually asking me how they can improve the economic situation when they have a good product in the LA so we ask it to all private sector in Makassar how they can uh, how they can connect directly to the society in LA by identify what kind of the product that produces by a community and the private sector giving, giving train to the uh, community in LA how they can enhance the product, how they can make it good uh, standardization. So it directly connecting such kind of the marketing contract. So nowadays, uh, uh, a good progress for the uh, farmer group in LA contact directly to uh, formal sector markets. And the business linkage, uh, this is because uh, the government funding from the government is very limited. Now the strategy of uh, the city of Makassar is making good connection for the all uh, business enterprise, uh, uh, banking institution, uh, private sector collaborate together how to make uh, the community can improve the uh, social standard. And Bandung Institute of Technology also involved in this uh, kind of the project by uh, providing uh, 
good technology to improve the production in LA and the garden LA. Uh, hopefully, as soon as possible, we can work and collaborate together. So what has been done by government that is ensuring the responsibility of each government. Uh, the main task of the governments in this, in, this, in this program, we create around six unit department in port and enhance the community in LA. We demand, we demand job full, fulfillment of food needs. This is the basic measure. This is the main basic uh, that usually conducted by uh, agriculture department and food security service by providing infrastructure agriculture. We provide fertilizer, uh, seed, and any other and any other tools so that farmer can inject that uh, farmer group in LA can inject uh, can inject to produce vegetable production so they can easy to get. Uh, food directly around the LA by system, by vertical garden system and using the polybag because this is the, the, the narrow area. The one LA just only the weight area just only around two to three meters. So intensive farming by using the uh, high land like a normal uh, farmer is difficult in Makassar. So we create like urban farming system by vertical garden system. So uh, since 2007 up to now, uh, my the, the government of, of my, in Makassar already established around a thousand farmer groups uh, that can easy for them to produce uh, food and in scale house how uh, scale of household so every day they can take it they can take it directly from the yard around the house and the second about the improving economics this is because uh, the uh, the activities in LA not only for urban farming system but also many kind of product from uh, small medium enterprise, such kind of handicraft, uh, home industrial sector, need also to uh, get the potential market. So uh, from, the, from this uh, task, we asking the, we ask the uh, cooperative institution and industrial Trading service, giving guidance to the small medium enterprise how they can enhance their production and improve the capacity of uh, their market. So up to now, they already have kind of the barcode of the product uh, standardization, standardization and labeling already appear for all small medium enterprise around the LA. The other things about the creation of environmental friendly, I think with the good uh, with the good plantation in the, around the LA, the weather uh, become a good situation, air press condition, and the community will enjoy to stay in a longer time uh, due to a good environment. And the final step about the tourism, the tourism the, the, the tourism that's not like in Bali or in Toraja, the tourism just only uh, kind of the program, how the six departments under uh, uh, major of Makassar walking directly to the uh, community in LA. For example, my department are responsible how to improve the garden LA and the industrial service, how they making good good collaboration to facilitate the uh, small medium enterprise, good uh, um, uh, marketing connection, and how they can uh, product in LA uh, can be established 
uh, well and sustainable production. And the education department also involved in this early to improve uh, sustain of the knowledge to the student, how they can understand about the uh, environment situation. Uh, the public infrastructure service is the most important job, so be responsible to making good route access all the time in LA and how the making community get sustainable water, good water supply. And my final presentations that's uh, like con my conclusion is I conducting this project. Uh, the pace per, the, the pace one is a gro is a growth uh, pace that easily uh, we directly inject to the women farmer group providing providing them to infrastructure production. This is because previously most of them just only spend much more time without uh, working properly in LA and nowadays they can inject farming properly. They're able to produce uh, agriculture production for consumption and also step-by-step -step sell to the market, both, both informal and formal sector. And phase two that we usually call the parliament, uh, when the uh, women farmer group already understand about the, uh, how they can engage, engage farming properly, uh, from this, Stave each department responsible how they can make a good standardization of product so uh, the pro the product will will competitive when they sell to the uh, potential market. So just only for hobby and consumption, but also try making palm-edit production for for each product that produced by uh, by women farmer group in LA. And the final step about digital market, uh, some of uh, women farmer group already uh, making stuff, making a digital market by using a grab in, in Makassar. We also know about the grab or Gojek. They can sell directly the product to other potential buyers. Uh, I give you one example in one uh, location that close to Hassanuddin University, the women farmer group already making a good connection to the community in uh, close to Hassanuddin University, how they can sell the product just only using the digital market. I think this is my simple uh, presentations. Maybe there are a lot of witness. Hopefully you give me the uh, uh, advice to be a good presentation. Thanks, Ibu Lili. Okay, thank you, Dr. Perdi. Very nice presentation. Thank so, you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, The next presentation is uh, from Dr. Kauru Suehiro entitled Housing After the Kumamoto Earthquake. Before the presentation, let me read first Dr. Kauru curriculum vitae. Dr. Kauru is uh, now uh, a partner at NK NKS2 Architects Japan. Currently, he is also act as associate professor at Graduate School of Human Environment Studies, Kyushu, Kyushu University. And Dr. Kaoru was born in uh, Oita, Japan in 1961. In 1986, he graduated from the Department of Architecture, Kyushu University as Master of Engineering. And in 1991 to 19, 94, he took his Master of Architecture at Berlach Institute, Amsterdam, and during that time also working at Ar Architecture Studio Hermann Herzberger. Dr. Kauru has 
Uh, quite a long experience, both as a practitioner and as an academic. He worked at SKM Architect and Planners, Tokyo, and also as principal architect at NKS Architect since 1998. He has also worked as a lecturer since 2005 as associate professor at the Department of Architecture, Kyushu University. Dr. Koro has also has uh, received several prestigious awards, among others, uh, first prize from Fukuoka Prefecture Architectural Award for Artistic Urban Design for Norimaki House, and also from uh, AIJ Annual Architectural Design Commendation. And the last one is from AAJ is in, um, 2017, he received uh, the awards for Folded Roof House. Besides that, he also involved in several activities in disaster sites, such as uh, design support for home for all, gathering place at the temporary housing for East Japan earthquake in Sendai City. And uh, the last project is in 20, 2020, the organization, reorganization from Kasei to Kasei R2 for July uh, 2020, heavy rain in Kumamoto. So I invite Dr. Kaoru to deliver uh, his okay. presentation. Please, Dr. Kaoru, the time is yours. Thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, introduction. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for inviting uh, this uh, um, Happy Techno uh, webinar series. Okay, I um, present uh, my story. Okay, just a moment. Can you see it? It's okay? Okay, yeah. Um, I will talk about the uh, uh, Kumamoto earthquake and temporary housing and also Kasei project, which is about the uh, uh, student activity. And uh, as you may know, uh, Kumamoto is southwest of Japan here. And uh, I will talk about Sendai case a little bit for uh, East Japan earthquake. And I now live in Fukuoka, which is where it's uh, pretty close to Kumamoto in Kyushu. And uh, Kumamoto earthquake happened in uh, 2000. Uh, 16, April 14. And uh, it uh, um, collapsed uh, many uh, buildings like this temple and the house was uh, completely collapsed like this. I mean, it was a very, very heavy uh, earthquake. And uh, this case, uh, the ground level of uh, concrete building was uh, crashed. Um, and then uh, this Kumamoto earthquake um, had a very, uh, um, notable, um, I mean, earthquake because uh, it had uh, two times scale seven, um, I mean, earthquakes. Um, it, it was uh, first uh, in, in uh, the history of Japan. And uh, they had, we, they had uh, seven times over scale six earthquakes. I mean, scale six is already pretty heavy, but, and then uh, many earthquakes happened after that. So it was very scary for the people. And uh, I mean, this is showing, uh, um, uh, I mean, death, I mean, number, and also a uh, uh, number of uh, houses, which was uh, damaged and something like 200, I'm mean, here, something like 200,000 um, houses were damaged. So uh, they had to prepare lots of uh, uh, temporary housing for the people. And then, by the way, um, I would like to talk about the um, former case um, because I was uh, in involved in this project, which is about uh, um, home for all um, in, for um, uh, East Japan earthquake. Just a moment. Oh, just a moment. Just a moment. It stopped. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Do it again. Um, um, this 
case, uh, this uh, um, big earthquakes uh, happened uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Sendai and uh, uh, Tohoku area. I mean, East Japan. Uh, it was uh, ten years ago, two thousand eleven. And uh, um, I mean, this um, case, uh, they had a very high tsunami. So tsunami came up to this building height. It was really a um, bad, I mean, disaster. And then for that disaster, uh, the government prepared a lot of uh, uh, temporary housings like this. And uh, it was uh, basically uh, made by, uh, made of uh, um, steel, lightweight steel construction. But uh, the, that, I mean, this kind of uh, houses were pretty poor living condition compared to usual living standard in Japan. Uh, so that um, uh, architect Toyo Ito, who was uh, a commissioner of Kumamoto Art Police, uh, he proposed um, to provide a, a gathering place uh, for the people, uh, which is made of timber and a very uh, warm you know, atmosphere. And then uh, Kumamoto Prefecture government decided to donate this timber small house uh, as a gathering place uh, for, for the disaster site in, in Tohoku in Sendai. And this picture is showing the, the, uh, the time when we brought uh, this model to the, to the people. But at the time, they were very, very sad, you know, um, situation. I mean, they, it was something like two months after the, this, this big uh, earthquake and then many people died there. So, uh, so they are really me. sad. Excuse me, Dr. Kaoru, are you sharing Sorry. your screen? Are you sharing your screen? Oh. Your, your, your slide is not visible yet. Sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, it didn't work. <laughs> sorry. Um, so, um, so this is a um, sketch by Toyo Ito. And then, uh, um, uh, with Toyota, we um, went together um, uh, to the to the disaster site, and then uh, uh, we explained our uh, intention to provide a small uh, house, I mean, kind of gathering place um, for the for the people. But uh, they were very very sad condition, and uh, sorry, and uh, um, we started the construction. Uh, this is a groundbreaking ceremony. So, uh, you know, um, priest play, okay? I mean, everybody play. And then uh, this is the um, frame, I mean, uh, built up ceremony. Um, then at the time, uh, we usually do the um, rice cake throwing. It's a kind of ceremony. <laughs> we give rice cake for the people. And then uh, many people gather and uh, they, pick, I mean, they get this rice cake. So in that case, you know, many elderly people and the kids came and then uh, they pick this, you know, rice cake. Yeah. So it was a kind of happy, you know, time. And uh, this picture is showing the, uh, the team who was involved in this project. I mean, this project is very, very small, just one house, but many people were, were supporting to make this, you know, small uh, place. And then we uh, made this, you know, uh, small um, place. I mean, which is uh, we uh, they named uh, home for all. This this it was the first case of home for all. And uh, uh, we gave uh, this, uh, I mean, um, place uh, to the residents. And of course, uh, we drink together. And uh, this home for all is very important because we think together and make together and uh, you know it's for everybody and uh, after after um, five six years after six years late after the the completion uh, in, in 2017 um, everybody you know moved out from this temporary housing i mean so temporary housing was closed um, but then they decided to to reuse that building to other place, to other community. And then uh, they uh, relocated the building. It was you know, very, very um, important for them to keep the memory of you know, having this kind of you know, uh, relationship uh, in uh, temporary housing. Okay, 
So then um, we had a very big earthquakes in 2016, five years after uh, this Tohoku case. And uh, um, they provided uh, 4,003 units. Um, and uh, in that um, temporary housing, there are 683 units, which was made in uh, timber. But uh, in this Kumamoto case, um, they uh, thought about this, you know, the, uh, temporary housing, and then uh, they thought maybe timber temporary housing is warmer um, for the people. So uh, they they tried to make as much as possible. I mean, they tried to make uh, timber temporary housing as much as possible, and also they uh, um, planned wider open space and also this uh, timber home for old for. Um, ten, uh, temporary housing site. So it's like this, this uh, left hand side is before and right hand side is after. I mean, before is in the Tohoku case and after is Kumamoto case. In Kumamoto case, they um, somehow um, improved the, the planning of temporary housing because I mean, uh, in this temporary housing, people has to live in something like for, for four years or five years. So it's not so short time. So living condition is pretty crucial. And then uh, this is uh, showing the uh, one plan. And so it's like this. This is uh, um, uh, steel um, temporary housing. So it's built on a uh, um, timber pile. <clears throat> and the atmosphere is pretty sad, I must say, but uh, a much wider open space compared to Tohoku case. Inside is pretty usual. Uh, house, so it's it's not bad. And this is the plan. I mean, very small, I must say. And uh, um, sometimes, you know, um, families has to live in a very very small place, so it's not so good. Uh, this is section uh, timber type. But uh, uh, when we talk about the timber, um, I mean houses. Uh, recently in Japan, we've been developed a, a quite high tech uh, timber uh, machinery system, uh, which is pretty uh, quickly, uh, um, uh, which they can pre uh, make the um, parts um, very, very quickly. So carpenter can build up the, the house uh, in a pretty short time. So uh, in this case, Kumoto Prefecture decided to use concrete foundation instead of a, a temporary um, pile, I mean, uh, timber pile foundation, because they thought maybe this timber temporary house will be used uh, for much more permanent, you know, I mean, houses. So because if you, know, you have to demolish the temporary housing uh, after two years, three years, it's wasteful. So uh, they decided to make that uh, a, a more, more permanent kind of style. So it's like this, and it's made like this. So it looked like just a usual house. And uh, they also made this uh, home for all gathering place um, in, uh, with uh, timber and construction. This, yeah, it's like this. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so this is a, um, a general uh, living support system uh, in Japan. But I must say, this two years, usually they say um, this temporary housing has to uh, kept for two years. But in fact, it, it, it cannot, I mean, it cannot end in just for two years. It will um, um, go up to five years usually. So uh, they thought maybe this uh, temporary housing should be, be used for more um, um, permanent house. <clears throat> And then uh, uh, finally, they could do that. So most of the uh, temporary uh, timber temporary houses were used for, for permanent public housing. And this is another case of public housing after the disaster. So this is more permanent. I mean, originally designed as a permanent you know, housing. I just show that. This, this looks pretty good. Uh, this also uh, looks pretty nice. I mean, <laughs> that's good. But then uh, after that, um, we had uh, uh, just recently, um, 2020, last year, we had a very heavy rain in Kuma River area in Kumamoto Prefecture again. 
and uh, many uh, houses were damaged again. And then they had to provide something like 800 units of temporary housing. But in this case, they decided to build everything uh, with timber. And uh, everything uh, uh, is supposed to be used for a longer period, maybe, but we don't know yet. It's just done. <clears throat> so this is another case. This is another kind of unit house. But now uh, they could provide this kind of temporary housing um, in uh, three months, two months, three months, up to six months. <clears throat> so it's not that long time. So we could learn uh, from this. Um, one is uh, the staffs, I mean, commodity prefecture staffs, staffs had the experience uh, of home for all in Sendai. So they could uh, know how to work on this issue, you know. So they had the experience uh, of commodity art police case. So they could um, uh, do the appropriate uh, support, uh, living, um, con living support. Uh, for the disaster site. So I think uh, this experience and, you know, preparation is very crucial. And I'd like to show one more thing, uh, if I have a little bit of time. So, um, I, I have to do it very, very quick. But um, I want to talk about this CASE project, which is uh, about the student's activity. Um, after this Kumamoto earthquake, uh, we uh, organized the student community uh, to help the disaster site um, um, by making object and also making event. So both uh, making object and event both together. And which uh, we call it a kase. Kase means uh, kind of support in Japanese. And also it's uh, uh, Kyushu architectural student uh, uh, supporters uh, for environment improvement, but anyway. <laughs> and then uh, um, something like 35 um, laboratory joined this project and then uh, went to support the people. So Toyoito <laughs> was a, a founder, one of the founder, and we had the meeting and uh, we uh, designed the, the Bibus. I mean, this uh, designer uh, is a uh, uh, the same designer of a Tokyo Olympic Games, uh, I mean, logo. He was originally Arctic, so <laughs> he, he could help us. And it's like this. Okay, and then uh, we went to the temporary house and then uh, we, uh, we did the workshop and to think about the gathering place like this and like this. At this time, we didn't have that uh, BBC yet. But then uh, again, I mean, we had a ceremony. Uh, we had the rice cake making ceremony. <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, completion party we organized like this, and we just skip. Yeah, we got a very nice uh, gathering place. And we uh, uh, helped the people to make uh, such kind of uh, flower, I mean, plant box. And kids were somehow playing around. And then uh, many students uh, joined this uh, project, like this, making a furniture kind of uh, event. Maybe you know um, this Kumamon character which is kind of famous, <laughs> <But> anyway. <laughs> and then uh, rice cakes drawing. And, picture. and for kids, we had a workshop, this. And then we, uh, again, we had another kind of disaster. I just skip a bit. And uh, we uh, designed a, a, a gathering place again, like this, like this. And we had, uh, we organized the party. And we, again, uh, uh, helped the people uh, by making uh, furniture and uh, some kind of event. But anyway, um, um, by, um, I mean, by doing this kind of activities, uh, we learned a lot of things. I mean, I, I want to uh, make the conclusion. Um, what we have learned from this CASE activity, um, this, you know, uh, activities of students on site are uh, uh, st stimulation for people to communicate to each other. Actually, when we went there, um, people start to communicate. And so it is very helpful for them to make a community. And uh, also, I think uh, we have a, a kind of instinct. Um, we feel happiness when we make something 
make something mean something, you know. Um, and then when we go there and we when we make something, then uh, people gather and then uh, people uh, try to help the student, which is very, very good for many people. And uh, also uh, we feel um, um, when we talk with others, I mean, in, in Japan, we are now in a, um, um, uh, popul our population is decreasing and we have a lots of elderly people and elderly people want to talk with somebody. So uh, of course we can send some kind of goods for the people, but uh, it's much better to go there and to talk with the, uh, with the people then they feel happiness, which is very important. So um, then uh, I think uh, uh, I, uh, we, uh, through this activity, uh, I think a student could get a very, very good education uh, by uh, doing this kind of thing, you know, and then they learn a lot. So uh, it is, uh, I think it is very important to do um, such kind of activity together, uh, I mean, uh, uh, making things and also um, uh, helping a, a kind of uh, you know activities uh, both together, and uh, it could be uh, uh, a, a very good program um, for the education. So uh, this is all uh, what I want to say. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Kauro. It's very nice presentation. And the uh, last slide is very interesting, the conclusion. Okay, uh, now uh, we are moving on to the next agenda, which is the Q&A answer, Q&A session. There have been several questions both, uh, submitted uh, via Zoom and via the YouTube channel. As mentioned, I will read the most asked questions first. Hello, Miss uh, Katina, can you help me? Or Padilla, can you help me open the Q&A column? Oh uh, yeah, for participants who want to ask, you can write it on the Q&A column. Please state your full name, institution, and to whom your question is addressed. Okay. Yeah. Well, we are waiting for uh, a question from the participants. Maybe I will ask first for uh, for um, Dr. Ferdi Mohtar. Dr. Ferdi, uh, uh, are, are there any uh, obstacles in implementing the recovery program in uh, Makassar, especially in uh, Lorong or LA, that we know that most of the residents there are uh, affordable or uh, poor level uh, economy. Can you uh, explain or can you uh, give us um, your experience, description of, this, of your experience about the obstacles, the problem? of implementing the program? Yeah, thank you, Ibu Lili. As I mentioned before about the LA in Makassar, before starting the, uh, since to, before 2017, most of the community who live in LA is of unhealthy conditions and very bad, very bad uh, infrastructures and a lot of crime everywhere. This is, this is due to uh, many of them without having a job properly, especially for a uh, woman, a house, household wife and older people. Uh, for that conditions, uh, the government relies 
how to enhance the community by uh, working directly to them. So the major of Makassar uh, starting from 2017 is not working at the office, but should be working directly to the field, uh, try to discuss uh, them about the, the problem and how to uh, making a list of the problem and step by step we allocate a budget from the government for every year and then we provide a, a technical expert and the technical expert will give a guidance continuously about the all uh, activities for the community in LA and most of them is engaged in small medium enterprise. Uh, and the other problem because uh, some of them feel uh, usually will work if there's a budget from the government. I think this is the difference in Japan. In Japan, this community very strong. And, but step by step, we, step by step, we train them about the what kind of the pro, what kind of the program what they need and if there is uh, if there is a uh, kind of the program what they need we del all the pro all, all the program that we already uh, making a good list we deliver to uh, several department and departments uh, invite them giving a training continuously uh, and uh, try to making report about the result of training. If still there's a problem, we never give up and we provide and we deliver to another experts. And this is because the government budget is very limited to allocate in every year. So we asking another private sector, banking institution or state owner enterprise to provide such kind of uh, corporate social responsibility, how they can deliver the program directly to the community. So uh, by, collaborating, by collaboration with the private sector and all the business sector, step by step, uh, we enhance the social economic activities to them. For example, in my office, we focus in a garden alley, and then the first step we giving uh, infrastructure productions, and we deliver the uh, expert uh, extension worker who can give directly to the fields, and after uh, after uh, they order the products, and we invite the uh, formal sector kind of the uh, restaurant supermarket to see what kind of production that produced by farmer direct to the field and like after 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 working together they can make a good network especially for the potential market between uh, buyers and the producers thanks Willy. thank you mr okay i would like to ask dr kauru while we are waiting for uh, yes. from the participant, mm -hmm. Dr. Koro, uh, it looks like the program in Japan is running smoothly from your slide. Yeah. There are no obstacles like in Makassar, especially regarding funds. So is it true? Are, or are there difficulties in providing housing for all in, in Japan in your uh, regarding your experience? I, I, sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. I mean, so uh, in Japan, what, what do you mean? <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, are you experience uh, any uh, problem or difficult difficulties in uh, implementing your uh, housing or home for all uh, program in Japan? Mm -hmm. Because uh, yeah, we know in Makassar, in Dr. Ferdi's uh, location, mm -hmm. there are uh, 
um, obstacles, especially uh, in uh, context of uh, funds or community economy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, in Japan, um, um, basic um, preparation for the housings uh, were, were provided by the government, central government paid the, the money, you know, paid, uh, paid the cost. So uh, they provide a somehow minimum cost uh, at the beginnings. But uh, in the uh, Tohoku case, um, people were complained about it. I mean, the, the condition of living was pretty bad compared to living condition now. I mean, of course, something like 40 years ago, 50 years ago, I mean, Japanese living condition was not that high. So people didn't complain about it. But uh, recently, you know, people are living in a quite good condition in, in a usual house. So many people started to complain about the living condition there because it was very cold and, you know, in a, in a Tohoku, Tohoku is a kind of cold area. So it is very cold and very um, bad and very small and such kind of thing. So, uh, um, so government decided to put so much money to build a new uh, temporary housing. So in Kumamoto case, they could get quite a good budget for the temporary housing. That is very different. And also this uh, uh, home for all, this gathering place, was newly somehow added. So uh, they could get more budget about it. Then, then the question is, why it's temporary, you know? <laughs> so it's very much wasteful if you know, they make such a high quality house, then uh, it's pretty bad. So uh, now um, I, I think it is a, a, a trend um, to prepare the temporary housing in Japan is to prepare the permanent quality house uh, from the beginning. That is the thing, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kauro. So, uh, there are three questions from the participants. I will read uh, the first from Mr. Andri to Professor Suahiro. Professor Suahiro, have you met post occupancy assessment to the buildings that were built after uh, earthquake. Mm. Was based on the experience in Indonesia, most houses were built only based on cost, as cheap mm. as possible, and uh, based on quantity. But mm. as time passed, people built their houses by their own to replace the previous one because they were not comfortable to live. Mm. Actually, uh, in Japanese case, uh, this kind of temporary houses were prepared um, very strictly uh, by the government. And uh, after, the, after the certain period, people have to move out. Somehow people are, are somehow pushed out to other place. And, uh, and uh, they demolish or they yeah, usually they cleaned up the, the, everything. So it, such kind of occupation basically it doesn't happen. And, uh, and they provide a new house or a kind of apartment for the people, but sometimes um, for, for single people and elderly people, um, they, will, they may have a very bad condition, I mean, living, but uh, it, it's a problem still, but uh, yeah, it's like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Kauru. So, um, you. next question is for Mr. Ferdi, Dr. Ferdi, from Samsirina from Architecture, ITB. Question is uh, based on the observations, do the economic activities in the LA have an impact on the quality of physical space of the LA? Uh, Is that my question? Yes. Some of them is a good. There's a good uh, physical impact, and the others is uh, still on going progress. I mean, uh, it's a, it is a good uh, physical effect when increasing the number of activities in the community. This is because uh, there is a strong relationship with if uh, increasing uh, activities. That's mean the government would like to involve and helping them. Uh, so that's 
it's easy to them to get assistance around six uh, department who will responsible to improve uh, the social, cultural, and economic condition in the community. So there's a good uh, connection between the community and uh, give, uh, obtain the uh, program from the government. For instance, if increasing economic activities, the number of uh, banking institutions allocate the uh, corporate social responsibility to improve the uh, small medium enterprise uh, activities. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Perdi. Uh, next, next question is from uh, Dewi Larasati. She would like to ask both Dr. Ferdi and uh, Professor Kaoro. How long do you need to build engagement with the community until the community fully support the project or program? Thank you. Maybe first uh, uh, answer from Dr. Ferdi. Please. Uh, How long do you need? Makassar just only one period of time using around uh, six months. For Isan, in my office, uh, at the beginning of January, we provide infrastructure production to improve the vegetable products in the area. And uh, every three months, we conduct monitoring. And the other three months is a final report. So when we all release that uh, all the uh, is the, all the partners already engaged and established the community. Uh, I think a uh, six month that's that's uh, quite enough, and then uh, we'll investigate if there is another community is not a good progress, so we can provide for the uh, next year to uh, train them how they can participate in, uh, con uh, they can participate and making good uh, progress of the project that had been uh, allocated by government. Thanks. Thank you, Professor Ferdi. Professor Kauru, mm -hmm. how long do you need to build uh, the engagement with the community? Mm, it's a difficult question. <laughs> Um, in my experience, yeah, as uh, um, Professor Fedby said, maybe half a year, but it really depends on the case. And uh, when we went to the, I mean, we, we went to the site uh, with the student and the student started to communicate with the people, then uh, it, uh, it um, became a kind of a chance for the people to communicate each other, unless, you know, they don't start anything in, in our case, in Japanese case. So uh, if somebody uh, can push a little bit, you know, uh, from the back of the, the resident, then uh, it may help uh, to make community. So, so activity, I mean, building itself is of course important, but activities, I must say activity is pretty important uh, for the community to, to make. Okay, thank you for your answer. We still have many questions here. So I will select be because yeah. the time is limited. We have to finish uh, at 17. Or, okay, and the, the next question is from um, Mr. Doni Kurniawan to Professor Kauru. What does actually drive the design of house after disaster? Is, is it cost, time, space? or other things? And how actually architects inform in the design based on your experience? Mm. I must say um, for, you know, very, very quick kind of uh, um, design for quick um, production of a temporary housing, uh, we architect cannot, cannot do almost anything. I mean, so uh, basically uh, um, house maker, um, will make the, the housing, but we could somehow organize the, the site planning. So in that case, in Kumamoto case, 
um, Toyoito and also uh, my colleague, I mean, Katsura sensei, I mean, other professor, uh, were um, really uh, uh, um, talked with the, the company and the construction company and uh, make reorganize the, the, the site planning, uh, which is better for living. So that is one case. But, and then the other case is if we have a time then uh, we could do much more. So uh, I show one slide, which was, uh, which was designed uh, very well. I mean, uh, which is uh, a home for one of the home for all picture, which was designed very well, which was designed by an, a talented architect. And uh, in that case, we had a little bit more time, um, uh, you know, to, to, for, for the people to wait. So in that case, we could do that. But if we don't have time, we cannot do it. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe the last question uh, from Samsirina uh, to Professor Kaoru and Dr. Ferdi. Dr. Ferdi first. Dr. Ferdi, is this ELIF program may increase the quality of food resilience based on economic values for society? Uh, I think yes, this is the main target of uh, Garden ELIF program. Uh, this is the because this is the program provide technical expert who can work with the women farmer group how they can get a good quality food from uh, using a standardization of product uh, labeling and packaging so if they already have kind of the standardization so that's easy for them to sell their potential market so that's that's kind of the job will be delivered to the industrial and cooperative department who will work around uh, six months uh, conducting uh, activities directly to the women farmer group in Eli. Okay, I hope this um, answers the question. So, Professor Paulo from Robi, Mr. Robi, mm -hmm. how Japan priorities prioritized for wooden cultivation on usage materials? For all these construction needs, hmm. <laughs> it's a bit complicated story. I mean, um, in Japan, um, we had uh, lots of uh, timber. I mean, wood in in a mountain. We have a we have a lot of mountain, especially in Kyushu area, our area, and uh, um, because of the uh, because our mountain is pretty steep, so it takes a lot of uh, um, work to to get the Wood. So uh, um, for a long time, Japan has been imported a lot of timber from North America or from Europe, and then uh, they didn't use Japanese wood. So uh, we had a lot of wood in, in the mountain. So the, the price was pretty cheap. So uh, we can use a lot of, I mean, wood, timber um, for, the, for the temporary housing. But recently the situation is changing. You know, people are more conscious about uh, uh, I mean, eco ecology, you know, and uh, kind of carbon, uh, a decarbonized society and such kind of things. So uh, people started to use timber more and more from, from Japanese mountain. So the uh, situation is changing. Okay, thank you. Very interesting in Japan. Uh, okay, the next question, Ms. Fatina, is we have, do we have still uh, your time? Uh, I think that, that oh, one question. One question only. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will, I will to choose. Hmm, it's from uh, Doni Kurniawan again to Dr. Ferdi. We see that Makassar City has been successfully managed the Garden Alley. What I want to know is what is Makassar City plan in the future for the urban farming, for the urban farming based on successfully Garden LA? Uh, well, the urban farming, uh, we really need how the community in LA can engage farming intensively by using, uh, by adopting uh, simplified technology. I mean, they can produce uh, all the production all the times uh, by using a technology that more easy to use. Uh, for example, 
using smart farming artificial intelligence how they can use by using a small uh, smartphone system and also how they can make it good or quality quality that can uh, use a sustainable and having the potential market so collaborate between all stakeholders not only from the government but also from other institutions uh, university it's really important to making good urban farming system become uh, modern city in Makassar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ferdi. Okay, I think um, time is up now. We have to, I have to end the session, unfortunately. There are still some questions, however, uh, it could not be answered due to, to limited time. We apologize for this matter and hopefully you are not disappointed. Okay, before ending the session, allow me to read the resume from today's presentation. From presentation from uh, Dr. Ferdi and Professor Paolo, we have learned about strategies to deal with two types of disasters, namely earthquake, earthquakes and the COVID-19 pandemic. Although the types of disasters are different, the strategies of the two are similar, both of which focus on strengthening the community through the design of an appropriate system. Both ensure that adaptive use of technology will increase the capacity of disaster stakeholders, particularly society and government. In Japan, people are hopefully are happily and, and in Makassar, people now uh, become a productive community from before uh, they are a pathetic society, said Dr. Ferdi. So uh, hopefully you, are, uh, you all enjoy this seminar and thank you. Dr. Kauru and Dr. Ferdi for your valuable time. Also, thanks to all participants for taking part in the seminar in this afternoon. Let me close this session with saying Alhamdulillah. Thank oh. God. I return to MC. Please, uh, Ms. Fatim. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Lili Tamulan, for hosting such an insightful discussion. Um, all participants, we are now approaching to the end of today's webinar. Uh, I would like to ask a moment for all the panelists in the Zoom meeting to open their camera, if not, uh, and take a picture together. Can I take a picture? Uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Dibja for help to screenshot Okay. Uh, one, two, three, smile. Once again, it's okay. 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 And then uh, before uh, closing, I have some important announcements for the participants. Uh, first, as a reminder, the abstract submission deadline is on June 1st, 2029. So uh, there are two main subtopics, adaptive technology and then human settlement. Uh, so we invite you all to participate in our international conference. Uh, second, for those who need or want an e-certificate, it is available through the link written on the screen. Uh, third, for further information about Habit Techno, please visit our website at Habit Techno ID. And the last, uh, ITB students, don't forget to fill uh, the list of attendees on the link listed. All right, uh, the very last agenda we have today is photo session with all participants. Uh, is it ready, Mr. Adit? One process. Okay. Pak Gagan, uh, mungkin boleh dibantu dan kok yang lain. 
Oke. Oke, uh, boleh dinyalakan videonya semua. Oh ya, mungkin sekalian saya bacakan lagi ya bahasa Indonesianya. Mungkin jika ada yang terlewat uh, pengumuman. Uh, jadi meng mengingatkan kembali pada uh, submission abstrak itu diundur jadi tanggal 1 Juni. Uh, jadi kami mengundang para peserta untuk terlibat dalam uh, international conference kami pada November nanti. Kemudian untuk yang ingin uh, membuat e-certificate bisa uh, mengakses melalui link yang tertera tadi. Kemudian uh, jika ada informasi yang dibutuhkan lebih lanjut mengenai Habitekno bisa membuka website kami di Habitekno ID. Dan terakhir bagi uh, mahasiswa uh, jangan lupa uh, mahasiswa ITB jangan lupa untuk mengisi daftar kehadiran. Oke, okay, semua ada siap ya. Satu, dua, tiga. Satu lagi. Satu, dua, tiga. Oke, okay, terima kasih, Bu In. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. uh, thank you very much for your enthusiasm for today. Uh, don't forget to follow us uh, on the next webinar series. Uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening. Good night in Japan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Fadi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.